Well, first of all, beware of Italians bearing gifts, but they said, this is for you. Wow. Well, of course, we me? couldn't make it in the linen, whatever, but whatever you want, we'll do it for you. Thank you very much. That's and for me? Hat. Yeah, of course. Look at this first. It's like a saddle, isn't it? Yeah. But... <laughs> yes, I should probably eat that later. <laughs> very nice indeed. Thank you. I'll just put it here if you want. What would you like me to call you? Sylvester's a bit of a mouthful. It is, it, believe me. Uh, I guess... Uh, Wally would be our... Wally. <laughs> now, Sly would be fine, thanks. Sly. Now, what is a nice bunch of action heroes like you doing opening a burger joint? Well, I'll tell you what. The, the world needs no more burger joints, that's for sure. But what they came up with, with Robert Earl and Keith Barish, is they came up for a concept. An eatery that you're surrounded in a certain kind of atmosphere that you feel like you're in a movie. Or you're part of part of your favorite movie. You get to see memorabilia. The whole atmosphere is one of entertainment rather than just sitting there with a knife and a fork. And there's going to be a hell of a party tomorrow. Who's going to be there? Uh, well, there's going to be John Bon Jovi, Rod Stewart. Uh, you'll have uh, Don Johnson, Patrick Swayze, Mel Gibson. I mean, it's going to be a nice crowd. Uh, no yeah. royalty? Unless they're showing up. <laughs> You say the nicest thing. <laughs> now, the Times, thinking of, talking about what people said, the Times said, I think last year, quoted you as saying that you didn't actually enjoy eating that much. I really don't. I swear to God, I don't. I, 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 the day they can reduce a meal to a pill, I'll be happy. I just never developed. I guess it's from uh, doing a great deal of training or whatever. I just Maybe it's just genetic. I, I'm just not prone to chew a lot. I just, <laughs> it doesn't go with my personality. The restaurant is also a movie museum, and I've heard that Rocky's, uh, how do I say that, Rocky's meat is on display. I yes. mean, the bit that you... Uh... Well, I actually, I do, I, I tenderize every piece myself, you know, as part of the contract. Nice. Actually, I think they're going to have a slab of beef in there, so you're all welcome to come on over and punch your favorite cow, really. Because <laughs> the original bit's gone off a bit by now, but the <laughs> Arnold's mum, I read, has given the, the apple strudel recipe. Mm -hmm. Has your mum contributed to this? Well, she's, yeah, she's uh, developed a thing called the wish sandwich, you know, like couple pieces of bread and you wish there was something in the middle of it. I mean, <laughs> my mother, actually, she wasn't a very good cook. Everything kind of tasted like tin foil. You know what I mean? It's like one of those quick TV type trays. So I wasn't really brought up on any kind of sense of delicate cuisine. No Italian stuff? Well, I mean, leftover pizza is nice. Uh, well. you know, meatball here and there. But no, not really. It, it was not... Uh, not a very food-oriented thing. None of you fellas is short of a dollar, so why are you doing this? Mm, greed. Yeah? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Well, it's sort of greed. Now, actually, uh, what it is is uh, they thought, and we all thought, that if we can get involved, like what they did with uh, something with the Hard Rock and other places throughout, you know, they've had in, in Vegas, there's always these concept places, that it would be interesting, it would be fun. And, you know, it, it's nice not to just be making films all the time to, like, venture out and, and deal with real people. And that was it. Uh, we had no idea that it would be so successful. And it has been Yeah, so far, over. yeah, great. Your other day job, as you hinted, was making movies. And my hair was dark <laughs> brown before I saw the screening of your latest, believe me. And this cliffhanger, it's called. Let's take a look. Sarah, I'm coming for you. Hold on just a little bit longer. Hold it for you. Dave! Wait, Sarah, you can't hold on! Sarah, don't look down! Keep looking at me! That's it, hold it! That's right! It's breaking, she's losing it! Sarah! Thank you! She'll have you in a second, baby! No! No! Please, Sarah! Hurry, Gabe, you're almost there, you're almost there, Gabe. Keep going. I'm here, Sarah. Sarah, I'm here, I'm here. I don't want to die! Sarah! Reach up and grab him! Reach up! Sarah, reach up! Come on, honey! Use your other hand! Reach up! Yeah. Reach up now! Sarah, Sarah, reach up! Sarah, reach up! Sarah, hold on, hold on! I got you! I got you! I got you! I got you. Uh, you're good! Right. You're good! Right. You're not gonna die! I just had a cup of strong coffee before seeing that. I nearly, nearly died. High drama there, but are you, are you a normal man? Are you not afraid of heights? I'm terrified of heights. Please, I'm in these cowboy boots, I get a little dizzy myself. I mean, it's... I, I, I like to do things, though, that if you can do a film that takes you into an area of a fear zone, I think that somehow it, it, 
it pumps you up and makes you perform maybe a little bit differently. Sometimes it's not so comfortable, not so pat, not so predictable. And, and I, I hate heights, I really do, especially when it was like 12,000 feet. And I just felt that this would make for an interesting vehicle because it hadn't been done before. What was the most dangerous bit? Well, there is a, uh, there's a helicopter thing at the very end where I'm being chased right to the very edge of this cliff. And the helicopter itself comes with almost 150 mile an hour wind force. And the couple of times that there were cables about as thin as this wire attached around your ankle and I fell off the side and there was a ladder there and I met it was a cable ladder and I happened to grab that otherwise it would have been not a very pretty sight <laughs> well, I'm you sure you're interviewing just an ankle right now <laughs> so. I swear your mother was worried because I mean you were up there 13,000 feet in just a vest <laughs> worrying stuff yeah, now, really cool. I'm sure the film would be a great success but thank you you are up against a heavyweight competition of course at the box office from a mate of yours mm -hmm. his latest effort is the last action hero a great classic comes to the screen take thy hand fair prince who said I'm fair <laughs> Or not to be. Not to be. Columbia Pictures is proud to present the screen's greatest action hero, Jack Slater. Slater! Don't even think it, Slater, you hear me? This is the Lieutenant Governor. Slater, here's what I want. The Governor gets you all in. I'll be back. Ha! You did not gonna say that, did you? That's what you always say. I do. Ladies and gentlemen, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Thank you. Thank you very much. That looks an exciting movie. What's it all about? It is um, <clears throat> about the fantasy that every child has, which is when you watch a film, and I, when I was a kid, had the same fantasy. When you watch a film, what would it be like if you get sucked into the screen of the movie and become part of that action? And uh, I remember when I used to watch <clears throat> the John Wayne movies, I was just wondering what would it be like you know, when he's chasing the Indians and he's uh, playing this cowboy for me to be part of this action, or for him to come out of the screen, riding out with his horse and being right there next to me. And so this is what this movie is about. It's like the people coming out of the screen, the villains are coming out, the, the action hero that I'm playing comes out, Kid is getting dragged into the screen and becomes part of my action. So it's a really a, a huge movie with a lot of fantasy and magic and special effects. And, and it's like Raiders of the Lost Ark, and it's like Star Wars. It's a combination of a lot of films like that. What it also has is you be, being <coughs> Hamlet. Hamlet, are you g d giving Kenneth Branagh a run for his money? Well, it, is, uh, it was very important for me to do this scene because I always wanted to say I also played Hamlet. So it's, uh, you know, <laughs> it's very important. But anyway, this is actually a scene where the kid is watching in a school Hamlet. And he's so upset because he's watching all these uh, uh, new action movies from his movies to my movies, Bruce Willis's movies, where there's a lot of action. And he's watching Hamlet in the school and there's no action. So he's getting really angry and all of a sudden he starts fantasizing what would it be like if I, his favorite action uh, hero, would play Hamlet. And then, of course, the whole action begins by shooting everyone and killing everyone and all those things, you know. <laughs> no yeah. talking, but a lot of action. Good job. His favorite isn't Madonna, really. That would have been... <laughs> now, you're rivals at the box office, in a way, but you've joined forces for Planet Hollywood. Uh, unlike Sylvester or Sly, you, um, you like messing about in the kitchen, don't you? Well, um, I always liked cooking a little bit. I'm not an expert in cooking. Um, and I always liked the idea of... Uh, uh, you know, preparing good meals and uh, the idea of having a restaurant. And this is why uh, when I was asked to be part of this restaurant uh, chain by Robert Earl and Keith Parrish, um, I thought it was a terrific idea to get into a new business, a new challenge. Yeah. And uh, do, we, do we see you in a little apron? Pardon me? 
Do you wear a little apron in the kitchen? No, no, I just go in there with my uh, world gym clothes and start cooking my, my stuff in there. And we make, of course, I'm a specialist in Austrian foods such yeah. as uh, Kaiserschmarrn and Wiener Schnitzel and Apfelstuhl and all those kind of things. But as you were saying before, when my mother goes into the restaurant, I mean, she gets very angry when there's one little mistake. I mean, she will taste all the food and then she will give me hell when she goes home. Is she a big woman? She's a rather large woman. I mean, uh, I hope she doesn't see this program. No, I, I don't oh. think you're here in Austria. I'm safe. But, uh, yeah, I'm just there. looking at the menu here. I mean, you've got, uh, you've got a butter pecan rum cake, a white chocolate bread pudding, and hamburger cheeseburger. I mean, is this really the way for a body beautiful? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> when you exercise... <laughs> when, you, when you exercise every day, you can eat any of those things. The idea of it is, of course, that... Uh, and we should also get in the gym business. Uh, over here. <laughs> the idea of it is, is that when people eat like this and eat a thousand calories, that they walk out of the planet Hollywood and then walk into our gymnasium. <laughs> so, no, you just go, gave me another idea. Well, Thank you very much. Right. Yeah, this is well, percent, good. just 10% right. will do nicely. No, you don't get to look like you guys do just by eating your greens. You've been pumping iron for years. How much pain is involved? <laughs> Well, you know, it really depends how far you take it. I mean, I used to be uh, competitive in bodybuilding, and then, of course, uh, the, the whole motto was no pain, no gain, and you yeah. always try to, to drive yourself to the limit and go beyond that limit. But now um, I'm training much more for fitness, and I'm much more interested in, in, in being fit myself and also promoting fitness. And while I'm here promoting the Planet Hollywood, I'm also here to promote my fitness books, which are... Uh, it's a fitness book that is being published right now here in England called uh, uh, Arnold's Fitness for Kids. And, uh, and at the same time, we're promoting also, of course, uh, the film. But the, yeah. the, I think the fitness idea is now the key thing rather than training every day, four hours a day with weights and, and, and trying to win the Mr. Universe contest. That's not really the, the bottom line now. Well, what interests interest me, pumping iron to a fellow like me sounds very tedious. What do you, what do you think about Sly while you're doing all that? Well, usually... Uh, See, Arnold is, uh, you know, has done it much, much more extensively and has won, you know, seven Mr. Olympias, and that's, like, unbelievable. I, I try to basically train for conditioning for a role. If I'm going to play a boxer, I try to get a certain way. In Rocky Three, I try to lose all kinds of weight. And in this film, like for mountain climbing, I, I, I had thinner legs, so I worked more on my legs and more on my forms for, for hanging. So I'm usually uh, motivated by the kind of roles I'm going to play whereas a professional has to work on every fiber in his body and I mean it's a full-time full-time job it's an extraordinary amount of work goes into it and, and they're really uh, they don't get the kind of uh, attention that and dedication that they really but you've got to, your mind has got to do something while your body is doing all that and you have said in that film pumping iron that it was as much fun as sex there was <laughs> well, that, 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 that was true except there was only up until the time I met my wife <laughs> <laughs> Sex became more fun. Yeah. I'm very glad to hear that. And she's here as well, I know. But actually, humping and pumping, you can do both. <laughs> so it will be what we call super sex. Yes. Yeah. I must make a note of that, humping and pumping. Right. The, um, but when you stop, I know from my own experience, as you can see, I've done it as well, but uh, when you stop, it all heads south, and I've noticed this orangutan looking back at me in the mirror. So, I mean, aren't you aware of the dangers of when you do pack it in one day? That all it... Goes well, away. I, I, first of all, I think that when you spend as much time training and when you uh, have felt as good as I have and as good as I do from feeling fit and feeling strong and feeling fast and energetic, I don't think you ever want to stop because you are becoming addicted to the feeling of feeling great. That's true. So therefore you will never stop. So there, there's no problem. And I can see that now, I mean, I look in the mirror now, I say to myself, I mean, Arnold, how can you look so great? I mean, it's just, it's just amazing, you know? I mean, it's incredible. It's man. like, it's such a stud. Yeah. It's so fantastic. So, it's all that there's and no pumping, danger isn't there it? at all. Even when I get to your age, I wouldn't worry about it now. I should probably land one on you in a moment. But anyway, <laughs> Can I ask you about your films? I have to ask you a question you've been asked before, but it has to be asked. You're idolized by children. We've talked about those, and we're family people, all of us. Uh, how much do you worry about the influence of your films, which are tough, they're violent movies? How do you rationalize that for kids? Well, um, myself, I think that uh, we have gone through a change now. 
I think that, uh, and I'm sure Sly will agree with that, that the 80s was much more an era where, the, where you had to do much more violent movies. That was the in thing in the 80s. I think that the 90s, we are concentrating much more on family-oriented movies. Even Last Action Hero and even his uh, movie, Cliffhanger, you will see that the violence is really toned down. And in both of those, in both of those cases, they're much more accepted by the entire family. It's much more geared for the whole family. So the, I think the 90s action heroes will be much more multidimensional than in the 80s. It will be much a, a, a softer character, still tough, mm. but he will be a, a vulnerable sometimes. He will have feelings. He will have he show love and affection and all those kind of and things. Humor, but God, still, yeah, and humor, thank God. A lot of yeah. humor and so on. So I think that this, uh, in last action here, we really redefine what the new action hero, you know, is. Right. We are now coming up to a, to a break, and we're going to keep a seat for the third musketeer, but here is an extra treat. He's going to sing for us now. Ladies and gentlemen, Bruce Willis. <laughs>
Now, uh, Bruce, that was a great number. You're actually best qualified of all these people here for, um, for being in the restaurant business, That's aren't you? That's right. That is correct. And you were a barman for how long? Years of, uh, years of experience in the food and beverage industry. I was a bartender, waiter, cook. Not a cook. It was a short order cook. Uh, dishwasher. What was your speciality? Did you die hard drinks. cocktails? Nah, I used it? to make drinks. I used to invent drinks. I made up a drink called the, uh, the Honey I'm Home. <laughs> that consisted of what? Well, it's, these are secret ingredients, Michael, of course. I can't know. <laughs> <laughs> die Hard, the first time I saw the first one, I was on a plane, which would... Great place. ...and turn around with engine <laughs> trouble. So thank you very much for a most relaxing hour and a half. In today's Times, the Sunday Times, there's a piece uh, that says about you landing a fee for $13 million up front for Die Hard 3. What is the truth of this? The truth of that article? Mm -hmm. I don't even know if there's any truth in there. You know, are we talking about something that was actually written down? Something yeah, that was in, written in, in one of these papers? Yeah, in black and white. In fact, oh, this, I, I think, is a Daily Mail. It's, it says here, Willis has been offered a guaranteed salary of 13 million pounds, pounds. to star in well, Die Hard 3. Right. Can you lend me about 10 bucks, sir? You know what? What do you say? Do, uh, does anybody here believe what you read in the newspaper? Do you believe it? <laughs> do you? Just you us. do? No. Come on. No. So it's no. not true? Well, I don't I, I generally, uh... Um... <laughs> pretty much less than that, honey. So I'm not going to ask you two what you think of that 13 million up front. What do you say to that? I think we need his agent. I do. <laughs> well, let's have some proof of what you're up to anyway, because the battle of the box office continues with your own contribution, and here's a clip from, from that. Detective Thomas Hardy. Tom Hardy? You're famous, man. Infamous was once the most decorated officer on the Pittsburgh police force. But you're a talented guy. You can be anything you want to be. I like my life just the way it is, Bob. Until he broke rank. Loyalty of all else except honor. And told the truth. It was a Pittsburgh cop that killed these girls. Just get these guys. Now. I got you this job after they took the shield. We have a rescue 9221. This is base. Party, please come in. 921, guys. He's got a new assignment. And Shark. A new partner. Hi, it's nice to meet you. I never had a woman partner before. Neither have I. And a river full of dead bodies. Well. <laughs> Sounds like our own Thames there. Yeah. Uh, another cop. <laughs> What's the, what's the appeal about the cops, then? Oh, you do a lot of this. You know, they, they're actually starting to lose their appeal for me. I'm getting sick of carrying guns in movies. Uh, but they're, you know, these are, these are, the, these are the cowboy <laughs> movies. These are the, the modern generation of cowboy movies, of good guys and bad guys. And I guess that has a certain amount of appeal. I mean, people keep going. I just get a little tired of all the guns after a while. Mm -hmm. Now, the tradition of uh, action movies with sardonic one-liners, which is what you three are specializing in now, started with James Bond. Did you grow That's up right. with, with Bond? Yeah. Oh, I did, yes. Yeah. I loved the Bond movies. I think the Bond movies uh, really set the, the pace for, for all the other action movies because it had everything. It had, I mean, I would say the beginning Bond movies. The later ones were not that yeah. great anymore, but I mean, the beginning ones uh, of uh, Sean Connery and also the other one, uh, Roger Moore. Uh, that came Roger Moore, and, and there was one other character that played uh, James Bond. Australia. There were some really good ones, but the last two or three that I didn't like. But they had great humor, terrific action, and always uh, uh, bigger than life things. I mean, it was wonderful. And I think that there's a lot of things that you can copy from that. Yeah, you go along with that slide. Well, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, 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 they're better at it than I am. I mean, I, there's a certain kind of delivery. I think, uh, you know, really, there's. Uh, <laughs> I don't deliver the one-liner quite as well, so I try to, to pick and choose a l little bit less. So but two lines now. I, I tell you, <laughs> that, <laughs> like Rambo's not exactly a stand-up comic. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't quite work. Him saying, you know, whatever. But I do believe, like you say, you come around in the '90s when, as as some of these films, the violent films, the humor diffuses and lets the audience know right away. Let's not take this as serious as it is. Mm. It's, it's not intended to be mean-spirited. It's just escapism, but without total roots in reality. Bond was... You all do this, don't you? I mean, Bond shoots something with a harpoon and says, he got the point. 
things like that. Yes. You like that. Very good reading of James Bond. Thank you. Ever <laughs> I haven't got the cruelty, otherwise I'm perfect. Uh, <laughs> now, the Bond theme, as you're aware, very much aware, is a feature of the London uh, planet Hollywood. And uh, two of your oh, friends you. are here before us to give us a special preview, Don Johnson and Melanie Griffith. Hello, folks. Can you hear us? <laughs> oh, <laughs> we've oh, interrupted you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Melanie. Caught me here at dinner. Wait, wait. Oh. Wipe your face. Honey, Don. Honey. Oh, You're dribbling. Oh, sorry. Don, learn sorry. to use a fork, would you? Just, just yeah. a little. What have you got to show us apart from the drool? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I just happen to have a little uh, Walter PPK here that uh, Mr. Bond used in uh, so many of his fine films. Doesn't work. Thank God. What else have what, what we got? We got over here. Oh, wait. Wait a minute, we have some jewels here. We have jewels here that Marilyn Monroe wore in Some Like It Hot. Yeah, Very they nice. were hot, certainly. Are you sure that wasn't the seven-year itch? No, no, the seven-year itch is right over there. The oh, dress. that's it. Oh, okay. And we got uh, my buddy Sly's uh, motorbike here that he rode in Rocky. Take it for a ride, Don. Uh, by the way, uh, we do have to chat about a golf game. I know about that. <laughs> and um, this is, um, yeah, as you recall, this is Odd Job's hat. And um, you can see it has the sharp edges on there. It kind of... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh no. This is Didn't probably leave that a lawsuit camera, coming up. Why don't you do the... the no, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. This is a women's apparel, I think, is right. your area here. Um, that dress seems to be growing out of uh, Arnold's body there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Uh, Whose was that? Um, this was Marilyn Monroe's in the Seven Year Itch. Yeah. This Michelle Pfeiffer <laughs> wore in Batman Returns. It's very small. And this is the actual Maltese Falcon. Ah. Right here. Have you scratched it? No, I was being very gentle. Actually, I have a knife here. I thought maybe we'd just uh, <laughs> cut it open here and see what we got going, guys. <laughs> nah, nah, just kidding. <laughs> That's a great selection. That. What is the place like down there? Is it impressive? It's great. Fabulous. It's great. It's the best. How many people are there apart from you at the moment? Very many and they're um, very quiet. About 45,000, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can do that. How long are you going to be here for? You're here for the party, of course. Uh, well, I'm going to be here long enough to take Sly's money on the course. <laughs> Excellent. And, uh, and, and, and me and I are going to go shopping. Oh, my God, Bruce, we're dead. <laughs> they're going shopping. Well, now, thank you both very much. We're going to back to dinner, if you guys don't mind. Yes, uh, please do you, carry you're on. You're doing a great job, really. Keep up. You're looking star. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Don. It's all live television. This. Show us your left breast, Bruce. <laughs> no. <laughs> Very dedicated to the whole Planet Hollywood, the whole notion of Planet Hollywood. Yeah, I don't ask you anymore. Dedicated, yes. Now, uh, Planet Hollywood, as we know, is all about movies, and the reviews in all the papers today are talking about your wife's film, of course, Indecent Proposal, yes. all about the married woman who accepts a million dollars to sleep with another man. Yes. Uh, what did you both think about a woman doing that? Well, as far as the woman doing it, I mean, look, it's just capitalism. It, it, that's a, uh, how I felt about it personally? Yeah. It's just capitalism. I had a problem with the guy selling his wife for any price. I mean, that they have a word for that in our country. It starts with a P. Yeah. You may have the same word here. We have that word. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said it would be even more interesting if he'd offered money to sleep with the husband. Yeah. <laughs> Never thought of that. <laughs> yeah. But there has it been an uproar a, about this film, hasn't there? concept, wasn't it? Yes. I loved it. But there's been a row about it. I mean, people have yeah. been discussing it. Controversial, controversial. It's just a while because then you go home with your wife and then the, the arguments start. What do you think of it? And then you say your opinion, and then she says your, your opinion, and then the fights begin, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, where it fell down it. slightly, because the other guy was Robert Redford, which kind of uh, spoiled it a little. I'll tell you, shall we do an Oprah Winfrey here? And we'll ask the audience about this. Uh, how many of you would go to bed with a total stranger for a million dollars? How many of you would go to bed with our guests here for nothing at all? <laughs> well, <laughs> and I've got £12.50. Got Any offers there? <laughs> Thank you, sir, very much. So, that's fixed up you three for the rest of your lives here. So, tell us, what, how long are you going to stay on, on this trip? Uh, I'm here for a couple more days, and then I have to go back to work. Yeah. Uh, back on in, Die Hunt 3? No, i um, doing a film right now called Color of Night. You'll never stop, you guys. What, what, what are you off to next? 
No, no. I'm going to do next uh, movie with Jim Cameron that is called True Lies, and uh, there will be another five or six months shoot until around December or so. Sly? I'm going to finish up uh, Demolition Man with uh, Joel Silver and a new kill kid named Marco Brambilli, and then look for something else to do in around October. Yeah. 13 million up front, eh? That's, that's a lot of dough, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> that's not 13 million dollars, that's 13 million pounds. Which is a lot more. At the going exchange anyway, rate. Anyway, I work in you are so out of line. I've been here for ages, Johnny. Where the hell have you been? It's all right, it's all right. It doesn't matter now. We'll just get on with the interview. My time is very precious. We've wasted enough already. Yeah, well, you know, pressure is my middle name. Well, Mr. Sylvester, precious Stallone, you certainly are back to four. In the breathtaking cliffhanger, he stretched himself as a mountain rescue man. <laughs> I got you. Just when you think you've, you've seen it all, they throw a cliffhanger your way where you're afraid of heights, afraid of this, you can't climb, whatever. So I go after it. So this is a film that they kind of put me on the edge, figuratively and literally. Nobody! There's just a lot of psyching out and a lot of uh, self-loathing. Like, if you don't do this, you're going to hate yourself, this and that. I noticed that the baddies were all British. Did you find the British people more menacing? No, you know, I don't know what they did. I tell you what, when I did the rewrites on the part, John Lithgow was American. Yeah. Then he shows up, yeah. and he's like mid-Atlantic, <laughs> and by the end, he's an Oxford scholar. Yeah. You thought of everything, didn't you? Everything except what's happening now. I don't know, they just sound more unique. Because, you know, for example, in America, you know, you're used to hearing it all. Mm. And, uh, but no, nothing personal. You killed the pig!